Welcome to video two of the three part series on introductory videos for the scientific Python course at TU Braunschweig. I'm Felix and I will be hosting you for the first two days of the course. This video will be on installing Visual Studio Code on your machine, the editor of choice for this course. Visual Studio Code is a powerful, extensible and free editor. It's my personal editor of choice. I use it for my personal projects and also at work. Navigate to their website code.visualstudio.com and download it according to your instruction for your particular operating system. An important remark for Linux users and potentially also Mac users, don't use repositories to install it. Under Ubuntu, for instance, don't use apt, apt, but rather install it with the Microsoft official binaries. That is because we will use one particular feature of Visual Studio Code, which is only available in the Microsoft version of VS Code. Then open up Visual Studio Code. It should look something like this. Potentially you have a home screen here that are already closed. On the left, you have the different functionalities of VS Code. Here you can open files and other stuff. And then down here, you have some action bar. Potentially this also looks a little bit different from you since I already have some extensions installed. Speaking of extensions, we need three particular ones. For this, go to this particular icon here and then you can search the marketplace. And that is the big advantage of VS Code that the Create community and Microsoft have built a lot of packages that make this editor a full-fledged IDE. For our course, we need the Python extension. So just search for Python and then you see the Microsoft extension for Python. Here you can install it. Potentially it will then ask you to reload the window the next extension we will need is the Jupyter extension that you find here. Also from Microsoft, install it and then it should be good. The last extension we need is Live Share. So this one here, also from Microsoft, install it and potentially reload your window. And then you should also see the Live Share down in the bottom here. There is one more extension I forgot about, which is the Code Runner extension which provides some convenient shortcuts. You can find it here and then just install it. And that's the last one we need. Now let's test our Python extension for this. Let's go to the files here and create a new file. Then let's save it. I saved it as test Python course here. And once you then also use the extension Py, it will load the Python extension. So your bar in the bottom here will change a bit. You see that it identified a Python executable, so in essence, a Python interpreter it can use or it will associate for you. And you might have also seen this pop up here that VS Code informed me that I'm using a Conda environment and should take particular care here. But we will do this together. In the bottom left, it is actually seeing one of my other Python environments. So we will now change this to the Python course environment we created in the previous video. In some cases, VS Code might not be able to find any environment. So this is then also your chance to inform VS Code about where it can find the Python interpreter. In order to change it, click on it and then it will suggest some environments here. And it already suggests the Python course environment that we created last video. If it does not suggest anything for you, you can also enter a path here. You can then navigate to the Python environment. For this, you have to figure out where Conda is installed. And then once you are in this installation folder, you can go to NVS environments and then continue all the way to the executable, which is just called Python. So I will click on the Python course here, then it will change it and we're good to go. Then let's write a simple test file. For instance, let's print some hello world and I will save this real quick. And now we can make use of the extension code runner, which gives us this play button up here. Let's click it and say run code. And then it runs the code for you. And if you used MATLAB before, this kind of gives you the feeling of the MATLAB IDE so that you can just write some scripts, execute them, 
And then we also see here we have something that popped up. I will just quickly close the file explorer here so that we have full view on the editor plane. And on this pop up here, you can move down here in order to close it and then bring it back up. It remembers where it was. And we have an output tab here, which then yields the output. And we have some print hello world here. But more importantly, you can access a terminal from here, which allows you to use the full power of your text based environment. However, you have to take care that here your conda environment is not yet loaded. So we need to activate it first. So conda activate Python course. And then we can also do our Python stuff from in here. We can also, for instance, open up an interactive Python session and directly interact with the Python interpreter, which then gives you quite a lot of freedom on how you develop your code. The first two days of the scientific Python course will be on a code along basis, meaning that you use your editor, for instance, on the right half of your monitor and on the left half, you use your video chatting software such that you can follow what I code in front of you and then just follow along. The third day of the scientific Python course will be using live share so that you can interact with the VS code session of the instructors. For this, we installed it and now we also have to configure it. So click on it and then it will ask you to log in. So for this, we will use GitHub and click on the GitHub login. Then this neat pop up will come up and you have to click allow. This will then bring you to this website. In my particular case, I'm logged in to GitHub. So I just have to click continue. But if you don't have a GitHub account, then this is the point where you have to create one. GitHub is free and I highly recommend to have a GitHub account anyways. So this might be a good chance to do it and then click continue. After you entered your credentials, you will then be redirected back to VS Code. And now the bottom bar has changed again. You now see that you are logged in with your GitHub user account, in my case, Felix. And this has also started a live session for other peoples to join in. This means that they will join in on your machine. You can see what they're typing. It is somehow similar to the collaborative features of Google Docs. Of course, in the scientific Python course, you will be joining the machine of the instructor. So you can close this one and he will provide you with an invitation link and you can here stop your collaboration session, which has been started here automatically, but you will keep your login credentials saved in the VS Code. And this is handy because then the instructor knows who has joined his machine. Thanks for following along the second video of the introductory series to the scientific Python course. If you had any issues in the process, please write a comment, even German or English, and we will be helping you. The next video will be on some hints on what you can do before the start of the course in order to get familiar with the environment and also with Python. And I hope to see you then.